Altering in Graphic 45, Steampunk Debutante Post Game for Mary Jane. I'm sorry that this took a bit to do, you guys. I kind of forgot about it, but here we are. So this is a 9-inch clothespin, all made out of wood, as you can see. Um, I'm just taking off the clip because it's easier to work with um, that way. So I'm using Fashionista, the Fashionista collection, and it's called In Vogue, and some hymnal paper. So I'm just going to tear it up in strips because um, I'm going to collage it on the back side or underside of the clothespin. Um, some of you may know, some of you may not know, that um, I did a giveaway and Miss uh, Mary Jane, my friend Mary Jane, uh, won um, one of my kits and she asked me to alter the clothespin for her, so I did. And this is the video for that. Um, I did show the already finished piece, I just didn't do the edited version because it was it just it's hard. It uh, takes quite a while to do it, so <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, I'm finally doing it. I did, I'm doing three today, so hopefully I get them all uploaded for you guys. Um, with all my clothespins normally, I do do this, um, especially the vintage styled ones. Um, I just apply distressing directly onto the wood. And it stays pretty pretty nicely. It just, um, it did use it up. So some, I mean, the more that you handle it, it may rub off a little bit, but um, otherwise it's it's doing its job. It's staining it. So, see how the wood looks distressed and kind of aged and dirty and stuff. Grungy. Love the look though. So I just do it on the back and the front and the sides. I do it all over. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the hymnal pages that I just ripped up onto the inside of the clothing. <clears throat> it's raining outside and it's kind of nice and chill in the house. Anywho, so I just paste it down and find where it's going to fit better. So what, I, what I'm really trying to do is, is cover all the wood. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm measuring the, like from the line, see this, the line there, the, where the clip goes, I'm uh, measuring the four areas of the wood there um, to put this paper on, to glue it on. So I just cut it to size, I distress the edges with the paper distressor and with Vintage Photo Distress Ink and rub it all on. See the difference there? It's pretty. It's pretty making things vintage and antique and stuff. It's so cool. So now I'm just going to glue on the paper. And for me, using Mod Podge to glue this on, uh, the paper on, works way better for me. I won't use a the ATG or Glossy Accents. You could. You can use that Glossy Accents if you want to, but the Mod Podge works better for me. And I do them in sections, so I already glued the top half. Here goes the rest of it. <clears throat> I have a little bit of a cough. I'm sorry. I'm clearing my throat a lot, so I really apologize. One of my favorite images from this whole collection is this lady here with the gadgets and gears and sprockets in her hair. Um, I'm going to try and make it a little bit more dimensional. Well, I'm just going to fussy cut this first, but then I'm going to make add some dimension to it with um, some bead spacers or pro spacers and um, a little bit of bling. So I'm just going to, I'm using black soot distress ink and I do this normally on some images to highlight and give it a dimen dimensional look. Almost a demented. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, what a doofus. Okay. So um, I'm using some alcohol ink um, in gold and then this one, in, I think it's ginger is the color. And this is mainly to um, give it like an antique gold so, or a bronze, antique bronze type of a color. It's just too silver for me. So I'm going to apply this lace too on the side to figure out which side I want. And I use hot glue for this too. Um, it works better for me. That kind of looked like a lot, but well. My girls may need that bee bracelet, the pink and black. Mm, aren't they cute? <laughs> so I'm using um, chipboard. I normally use chipboard as dimensionals because it gives it a sturdiness that I like. So I'm doing that. And here's my little spacers. 
I'm just going to use three for, for now. And these look like flowers, and sometimes I've used them as flowers because um, they look like a little daisy. Uh, but they can also work as a little sprocket, a little sprocket gear. So um, I'm just finding where I want them. And then after I figure it out where I want it, I just glue it down. And I'll use glossy accents for that. Um, I didn't show you, but I, that's what I did. Um, and here, I'm going to use these very small little bling. I'm sorry, it's a little blurry, you guys. I'm using a different camera that I can only use. Um, I can only edit using this camera until I get a new laptop with um, the editing program that I want. So, anywho, just figure out figuring out placement. I'll glue that down. And I'm going to change this here. I can see my arrow here. That's a broken, part of a broken necklace that I had um, with these big pearls. And I, I ended up changing my mind. Um, I don't want it like that. So you'll see later on. I'll point it out to you when I do change that. So this is like that antique bronze kind of a color metal photo corners. But of course you can use it for anything you want to corner. You can piece of cardboard or whatever. Anyhow, you see the all the the tonal sheets down there. I love the way that it looked. I'm gonna end up doing something off to it later. And there's the photo corners are on. I'm gonna let those dry while I uh, fussy cut stuff. So here's some of the things that I did cut out of the paper collection. This is still from the steampunk. One. Now the paper that I applied, of course, I showed you was from the Fashionista collection, but um, I wanted something black and floral for, I guess, the, just the, the look of it. So this I I did the wrong way. I should have glued down the paper to the grunge board, but I cut them both separately and then I glued it on. Anyway, and I've tried doing it the other way, uh, or that way before, and uh, trying to run it through the die is messy. So. This was easier at the time for me to do it like this, so. And then the butterflies. I just use a little bit of a piece of chipboard, a little sliver of chipboard for the body, for stability. And then uh, that, that wire that I flashed you there. Just made the antennas out of it. Yeah, I'll show you that. Sorry, it's a little blurry. So I have this bling that's like cat eye shape. And uh, I use that for the body of this. This butterfly. This is, I think, the biggest one. And I have a, like two other butterflies that are different size. But, um, yeah. So I'm using shabby shutters to distress the color, using that for the edges of the. And you can't see a whole lot. You can see a little bit of the glow, but not a whole lot. Just hug them down. And I always do this in, in sections. Um, if you try to apply your hot glue all over the place, then um, sometimes what happens is that it starts to cool down before you can get it stuck down, and it doesn't stick. So I do them in sections. Um, this is uh, some of the branches and leaves and foliage and stuff that I fussy cut out of out from the paper collection too. So. And um, I just wanted to try a different look here, so I got some of my lace and made a bow, and I'm attaching it upside down. Don't ask me why I did that, because honestly I really don't know, I just wanted to try something different. I think I saw it somewhere in some other project somewhere, I think it was in a magazine or something. <clears throat> so I thought, why not? So here's some of the roses from one of the... From the same, one of the same uh, steampunk papers, and I just use that like um, the base part of an actual dimension, dimensional rose, and that is, I believe I am Rose's rose. And here's the um, another little rose that I added, um, another little cutout underneath that. I think this is a. Uh, I want to say Wild Earth is Crafts too, but actually somebody sent me a Ziploc of all these little flowers, and I think that's from that box, and I can't remember who gave that to me. But thank you, whoever did. <laughs> the colors went nice, um, went well enough. 
So I, I use those together. Oh, I love the sound of rain outside, you guys. You guys like rain? So there we go, placement. Just figuring out exactly where I want it. <clears throat> and you know what? For some reason on this close pin, I did add a lot of layers of stuff. So there's like the chipboard back there, and then the cutouts, and then the lace and the cutout under the flowers and the leaves so and i have feathers back there those flapper feathers these black ones so i have that back there i'm adding on this bling to the ends of some of the swirly swoop parts <laughs> so there's another one there and then i'll add one there i don't know why i did that either just uh something that i wanted to do i guess so i'm using a uh, a skewer to curl these um, this floral wire. Um, this is what I cut off of the flower, the roses that I already glued down, and uh, I like the spiral look of it. Um, it reminds me of a, a grapevine actually, and I love grapevines. I love the look of the branches and stuff, how they coil on everything. So, um, and I do this a lot on on almost every project. I want to say um, I'll make these little coils and. I know a lot of you guys do too. I should have used the uh, hot glue for this. I don't know why I use glossy accent. Because it takes a little longer to dry for some reason. And I, I don't know. I don't know if I went back to use hot glue or not. But anyhow. I think I'm trying to pull some of it out. Yeah, now I'm using hot glue. <laughs> I guess because I figured it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I'm just going to tuck it back somewhere behind the flowers and um you guys I, I do have um some more clothespins but I'm trying to create my kits again um using different papers I don't know I might do Webster's I might do some bow bunny or some other ones I don't know but I'll let you guys know as soon as I have pretty much all the stuff together I'm just pretty busy right now with other stuff so but keep watch because I do have these exact size so that's um, hymnal paper that I sat back there um, as a base for this. Um, this is a little book plate that I bought with a bunch of other little charms at a local scrapbook store here that has closed. Let me see that. But um, yeah, I'm just going to use a little bit of gloss accents around the edges and then stick that back on there. Now, using a Dodge ticket for it, um, I didn't. I could have used you know whatever other scraps that I have and. I don't know why I did that, but anyways, I used a rub on that Sizzins fire and um, used some distress ink on it, and I don't know, I thought it was fine, I don't, I don't know, I don't know why I used it to get it, I still think about that and baffle myself, I baffle myself. <laughs> this is a Seven Gypsies Industrial, what is it called, Industrial Gears. So I'm just going to glue that to the corner here, the top corner, and um, I added a small clear bling to the center of it just because I wanted to and you'll see now that I changed that chain that I had um, around it around the um, oh wait a minute that's not that same side but I still I took it off I used something different um, it was like satin ribbon with some pearls or whatever but anyways on this side I did use a chain and it's you know how there's, there's, and I mentioned it on the other video, but there's some girls that will wear like a waist chain, and there I'm showing it there. So I just used it to hang around the side there, so it just got, kind of gives it a sexy look to me, I guess. And that's in my head. Who knows why. And then I wanted to drape this, uh, the part of the chain, the same antique bronzy colored chain along the side, um, off of the bracket, and that's what I did. It's a little tricky doing it because I, I, you know, sometimes you shake a little bit, and I didn't want to shake too much and lift it off. But it came out fine. I, I still like how it looked. So 
detail there it is a little up close and I have details um, detailed pictures on my blog um, that I posted a while back when I, I think it was a couple months ago so again I apologize I'm doing this so late but the link to the post the original post is below so if you want to if you haven't seen it um, and you want to see some close-up pictures you can head over there and double click on the images and you'll be able to see them and look really up close and stuff so here's the um, the layout so to speak quote unquote um, that I'm putting together down here below so a couple of spotted feathers a string of black sequin and I'm gonna create a like a little garden type of look with some flowers and leaves and um, the butterflies the butterflies are basically going to be like flying up and away from the bottom still so. <clears throat> I don't know if that's a flower that I made I want to say that it's a flower that I made yeah I think all these three are flowers that I made um, I have a tutorial called making prima flowers it's a two-part video and um, I'm making well the, the prima hat has been uh, named uh, Belle Art Nouveau flowers and um, they basically are cupped petal roses and um, it just kind of looks like they've kind of cupped all together like a cabbage flower I guess so, yeah I came up with that last year just kind of mimicking it and I liked how mine come out so I kind of make my own all the time I still have that same pack I haven't even used the flowers from the pack so kind of a uh, I should though I should use it since I have them yeah so I just uh, tacked on the butterflies and I added uh, the wires to the other butterflies and some bling um, onto the wings I'm gonna show you there the little bling on the body too and there's a little one there by the roses I'm sorry it's blurry you guys Jeez. <clears throat> so this here is um, these were brad uh, lock they're locks and keys and um, I just cut the little legs off the back and then um, I think I use gloss, glossy accents to just tap them down what is this? oh this is the initials this is uh, Mary Jane's initials that um, I, <laughs> I had to use the emery board because I couldn't with the just paper distressor um, the paper with my finger holding it would not it wouldn't reach the razor blades that are in there so kind of how do you something else just distressing it and I'm gonna end up putting um you call it the chipboard as dimensionals in the back of it so just to kind of stand them up here we are no, I have a. I bought a bottle of another kind of an accent by Ranger. It's called Matte Accent, and um, it's like a musty, not musty. Um, it's a cloudy when the that glue dries. It's kind of cloudy, so I don't use it for anything um, except to really glue things down with. I don't use it to accent anything. Um, I normally use the crackle accent or the glossy accent so I'm gonna use I'm using that here the glossy part and then just look they make it look like epoxy stickers so I really like that and it's a little bit more dimensional <clears throat> excuse me so here is some of my um, homemade gold Mod Podge actually it's not homemade it's really just some Pearl X that I uh, poured into the Mod Podge and um, it I use it to coat stuff and it gives it a yellowish yellowish look so it has like a glittery look to it and it's really cool um you can see some of it I'll, I showed you I'll show you here um, after it dries um, how it looks but it really does give it a distressed antique yellow look to it to the paper and stuff and because there's already distressed ink on the paper so it kind of creates it like smears the yellow a little bit more from the ink. I'm just brushing it all on there. I really like how it looked actually. It was um, pretty good. So here it is I think wet. It looks very shiny. So yeah I think it's wet. And then here we are 
already dry. Yeah, so it has a little bit of a gloss to it, but not a, not like it was a second ago. So there we are. And then I'm um, going to put the clip back on. Now, I think this took me like almost a week to, to make because I was so busy. I was busy with other stuff, and I think I was going through another flare, and sometimes it's really hard to work when, you know, when you're hurting and stuff. So, But I got it done, and Mary Jean has it at home, and she's a sweetheart. But this was really fun. I really liked it. If you guys have never created or altered a clothespin, it's pretty fun. I know Michael's has had some um, a little bit smaller things like 6-inch that people have altered too, and you can do it too. Um, I like the wooden ones, so the all plain wood, because the Michael's one has already a coat of paint on it. So you can still alter it. But it's fun. If you guys haven't, you should. I think I pinched myself. So there it is. It's all done. You see that satin ribbon with the little uh, danglies there. And I created a little bit more charms, added more stuff on the chain. And that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Oh, here is, let me read this. I appreciate the request for this video. I really hope this video showed products and techniques that will help you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching. The link to detailed pics at my blog is below in the description box to the jewel box. Hugs and kisses. Bye, you guys.